Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of your Raw Review Show. I'm your host, Glenn Thomas. As always, one four for the Wrestling Marks of Excellence, which you can hear each and every Thursday night on Fox Sports Radio 1348 and 96.9 FM. You can always find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, as well as YouTube. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification on today's show. Let's get started. We want to talk a lot to talk about here on this past episode of Monday Night Raw. I think one of the biggest things that everybody wants to talk about uh, is Becky Lynch uh, in the tri- in the Authority Triple H with Vince McMahon as well as Stephanie McMahon? Uh, the show started up with Vince, Stephanie McMahon, and Triple H coming out saying they had you know Becky Lynch had gone to the doctor and she should be ready by WrestleMania. That they forgive her. They want to do what's best for business. We have we heard that for years now. That they want to do best what's best for business in the WWE and what's best for business for the company. Uh, you know, they go on and talk about how the main event is Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch. Uh, Triple H talks about how, you know, Becky has to tell the end of the night to apologize. They apologize. They forgive her. Now I'm going to skip on. This is a picture from the end of the night. You know, he talks about apologizing. They go through the whole night of Becky Lynch. Should she apologize? Shouldn't she apologize? And some of the ladies backstage, uh, Alexa Bliss and some of the other superstars was asking Becky, go ahead and apologize. Don't apologize. Do what you want to do. Uh, not knowing that the main event would be in jeopardy here uh, of for if Becky Lynch does or does not apologize. Now, as a wrestling fan, you knew that she would probably eventually apologize. And shout out to Champ Creed. Uh, uh, who sent me a text during the show was like, yo, this is the same thing Conor McGregor did uh, months ago when he Conor, Conor McGregor did when he was in the UFC uh, when he said, I owe apologies to no one. Uh, go, go ahead and find that tweet or find that when Conor McGregor, McGregor did it. But nonetheless, WWE's playing on that just a little bit if you did not know uh then we have uh go uh, once again at the end of the show here because this is the major news this is the big news uh vince mcmahon comes out after ronda rousey after becky lynch does apologize to triple h and to stephanie mcmahon vince mcmahon comes out saying he doesn't accept becky lynch's apology and that he is the man around here and he is the man and he is the only man and that becky lynch is now suspended for 60 days now if you do the math ladies and gentlemen i'm a mathematician and Vince did the math for you. That is five days after WrestleMania. So Becky Lynch will allegedly will not come back to five days after WrestleMania. Now this made Twitter and the wrestling community go up in an uproar. A lot of people chimed in here because Charlotte Flair has been added to this match. Charlotte Flair has been added to the match. You have not known by now. When Vince McMahon suspended Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair was added to the match. Or oh, excuse me, not added. Charlotte Flair replaced Becky Lynch in this match. So it would now be Ronda Rousey taking on Charlotte Flair. Now, if you're a wrestling fan and you insider, you know right now, this probably won't stay true to form. It won't be the way that it is the whole time. That some way, some shape, somehow, Becky Lynch gets back into this match. Uh, it has to be a triple threat here. And a lot of people went to Twitter once again complaining about, hey, Lynch versus Rousey's one-on-one is what it what needs to happen. Uh, none of this triple threat crap. People don't like the fact of triple threats. They hate it. WWE has done a triple threat at WrestleMania for the WWE title or the world title for a title for a long, long time here. Uh, it's not. This won't be the first triple threat, but it will be a triple threat nonetheless. Why not? Once again, fans chimed in again. Everything from WWE went downhill after this announcement. Congratulations, you killed your own company. Now, you got a lot of people who think that WWE killed their company because they, of Charlotte Flair being announced uh, into this match. But look, let's be honest here. We knew this going into it some way, somehow, that Charlotte Flair was going to be put into this match. If you was a wrestling fan, you thought it was going to happen at the Royal Rumble. You thought both of them were going to come out of the ring at the same time and, and a la uh, Bret Hart, Lex Luger. Some way, some shape, somehow, that we've been planning for this for a long time. As a wrestling fan, and I tell you to be a wrestling fan, sit back and relax and let the storyline play out. Let it play out. Don't go to your, I've seen people on Twitter as I'm counseling my network. Well, just be an idiot and go ahead and counsel your network. It, you know, just, just do what you need to do, but let it be storyline play out. It's WWE. It is entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. Newsflash, entertainment. Let it play out. Whether you like it or not, guess what? You're going to tune in. Or you just have to wait till AEW starts showing stuff on TV to watch wrestling. Uh, but nonetheless, this storyline is going to play out. and It's going to play out what's for best for the company right now. 
And let me know your thoughts. Do you like the fact that Charlotte Flair has replaced Becky Lynch? Do you like the flat fact that there may be a triple threat match at WrestleMania? Uh, leave your leave your comments below in the comment section and let us know here at Wrestling Marks of Excellence. What are your thoughts here about Charlotte Flair being put into this match? Uh, did Becky Lynch come off looking weak on Monday Night Raw? And hey, is there is this a good play for triple threat match? at WrestleMania. Tune into this week's show uh, of Wrestling Marks of Excellence. I'll give you my opinion as well as the Wizard give his opinion about the Triple Threat match if you want to hear what we had to say about the Triple Threat, about the, excuse me, about Charlotte Flair replacing Becky Lynch uh, and eventually being a Triple Threat match. Spoiler. And then we move on to the other high point of the night. In my opinion, another high point of the night was that you had Bobby Roode taking on Bobby Roode and Chad Gable Tag Team, Raw Tag Team Champions, taking on the Revival. He had a very good hard-hitting match back and forth between these two guys. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the company right now in WWE, all you got to do is tell the company that you're leaving and you'll start getting the push. You tell WWE I'm going for AEW, I don't like the way things going. Once again, you confront you you have conversation with Vince. You don't confront Vince, and things good things that happen to you, and that and good things that happen to the revival. And we have new tag Raw tag team champions. The revival, ladies and gentlemen, are the new Raw tag team champions. Like it or hate it, they complained, they got a push, and now they are what you wanted them to be. Raw Tag Team Champions. Now it's up to the Revival to be able to revitalize the Tag Team Division. It's up to the Revival to re to maintain and have a good run as Tag Team Champions. I'm sorry. Somewhere down the line, I see Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins becoming Raw Tag Team Champions. It's just just one of those things. You may not like it, uh, but I, I don't see the Revival having a long run as Raw Tag Team Champions. Hopefully they have one. Uh, it will go through WrestleMania. Hopefully these two guys stay healthy. Um, because that has been the problem with them before. They wasn't healthy enough. They should have, when they came in from NXT, came up from NXT, they was going to get pushed. Uh, but injuries, bugs hit both of them, and they didn't get the title, and they just never recovered until this past Monday Night Raw or until AEW said they were starting a company, and the Revival said they wanted to leave, but Vince was like, uh-uh, we got you locked up until April 2020, but this is what we can do for you. But nonetheless, the Revival or your Raw Tag Team Champions – a uh, very big, good highlight for Monday Night Raw. Very good highlight for Monday Night Raw. These two guys, I think, are what WWE needs for Tag Team Championship. Too bad they don't have anybody on Raw to go against. Then we have Seth Rollins come out, and he does not usually talk about the F5, 6 S5s that he took in, that he took from um, Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman comes out and address, addresses Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins talk about, well, I don't care if anybody gives me a chance or not. Uh, y'all has been holding the WWE Universal Championship hostage, and at WrestleMania, I am going to take it from the beast. Your typical Seth Rollins promo. Let's see what WWE does for Seth Rollins. Let's see what kind of match Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar will have at WrestleMania. This one will not shut the house down, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this would not be the main event of the evening. This would not be the closing closing of the house uh, show at WrestleMania. Hey, only time will tell. This storyline is good, but it doesn't... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Intrigue me that much. It's just a way to get the Universal title off of Brock Lesnar. It has to be much more than just Seth Rollins in the ring cutting promos or Paul Heyman coming out and rebutting Seth Rollins. Let's see a little bit of action between Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar, which we have time. I just told you to let the storyline play out, and I need to take my own advice on this one and let the storyline play out. Then we saw EC3 taking on Dean Ambrose. We know EC3 in his last week debut to the Red Brand uh, defeated e Dean Ambrose. This match right here went back and forth between the two. And Dean Ambrose ended up picking up the win uh, with a roll-up over EC3. Dean Ambrose is still being relevant in the company, even though he told the company he is leaving. Uh, another way that you know that Dean Ambrose is being relevant in the company, the company continues to use Dean Ambrose, is that Dean Ambrose has a VIP package at WWE Access this year, uh, which is on Sunday morning. So all you Dean Ambrose fans, uh, you might be your last opportunity to check Dean Ambrose out in the company or meet Dean Ambrose in the w as a WWE superstar uh, will be Sunday at Access. No, they're not plugging this commercial, but nonetheless, Dean Ambrose picks up the win over EC3. <laughs> and I move on. 
Then we saw Nikki Cross in Ruby Riot. Now, this match right here, I think WWE did this match this justice. I didn't do it the service that it needed. It kept cutting in and out backstage with Charlie and, and with different wrestlers uh, as they wanted to find out what Becky Lynch was going to do. And so you didn't really even see the two ladies come to the entrance. You saw part of this match because of everything jumping back and forth here. This match right here, I think Ruby Riot is a star. Nikki Cross will be a star in the company. Should have showed the whole match <laughs> back and forth. Shouldn't have cut away uh, into other things. Should have gave the, atten the attention. Should have been brought on this match and not the Becky Lynch situation. But nonetheless, uh, Nikki, excuse me, Ruby Riot picks up the win over Nikki Cross. A uh, good match. Next time WWE, let us the fans not get cut throughs, but get the whole match. <laughs> Speaking of Riot Squad, we saw the Riot Squad, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, take on Nia Jax, Tamina, as well as the Boston Hug Connection, Bailey and Sasha Banks in a triple threat match, tag team match. All three of these teams will compete in the Elimination Chamber on this Sunday night. And the winner will, and the winner will be your new, oh, your, excuse me, your new, once again, your new, your new women tag team champions along with Naomi Carmella along with the Iconics along with along with Sonya Deville as well as Mandy Rose will be put into elimination elimination chamber now match was pretty good going back and forth only thing I didn't like about this match was that Nia Jax and Tamina picked up the win and if you watch wrestling for any as any extent of time you know just like I do they won before the go home show on the go home show they would not win this Sunday and I'm totally disappointed in the fact that Nia Jax and Tamina won't become your first Raw or your first women's champions, tag team champions. Which that leads up to my next pick. Well, my pick, of the, then that was my pick, Nia Jax and Tamina, but um, I guess I'm going to have to change my pick now. But we move on. <laughs> then we saw Dean. And then this match right here, which the final, one of the final matches or one of the matches of the show, uh, we saw Finn Balor take on Drew McIntyre earlier. Picked up the win via DQ. Uh, then we saw uh, Dean Ambrose. We Then we saw Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, uh, Baron Corman pick up the win over Finn Balor, Braun Strowman, and Kurt Angle. Then the match got restarted after the second referee came out. And then we saw the good guys go over, telling the same story over and over again. WWE needed to buy time, so you saw long segments of this match. It good to see Kurt Angle wrestling, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, it's good to see Kurt Angle wrestling. Good guys go over to good guys go over tonight, uh, over in the night. Uh, Baron Corbin still on TV. Look, WWE, you have a lot of stars. You have three hours worth of time. This match, in my opinion, this whole segment got a lot of time where it didn't really develop anybody or develop any more stories. We know Bobby Lashley is the Intercontinental Champion. I'd love to see a, a Intercontinental Championship. Bobby Lashley one on one with Finn Balor. Uh, we know that Kurt Angle's having problems with Baron Corbin. I guess that's going to set up some type of WrestleMania match or Elimination Chamber match or some match that will be on the pre-show. And then we know Baron right now, Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre are somewhere in the mix. And we've got to find a place for WrestleMania to put these guys at. So they, they, they grab, they're grabbing straws. In my opinion, this Raw was a okay. If it wasn't for the Becky Lynch situation, it wasn't for the Revival winning the tag team titles, I wouldn't really give this Raw a thumbs up. But nonetheless, because of Becky Lynch situation, which is good, has everybody talking, and with the Revival being your new tag team champions, I give this Raw a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think. Once again, join myself, Nephew Corey, as well as Champ Creed on this uh, Thursday's edition of the Wrestling Marks of Excellence as we give you our opinion for Elimination Chamber. We'll talk about Becky Lynch being removed for WrestleMania as of right now, Charlotte being inserted, Catch me tomorrow night as I give you my SmackDown review. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining Glenn Thomas here. And always, if you're not confirmed, consider yourself denied. End of story.